Hello everyone. So in today's class we will be discussing about reciprocating pumps. So you all know what a pump is right. So pumps are devices that are used to convert mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. That means it is used to transfer water or any other fluid from a lower level to a higher level. So based on the way in which the pump, these pumps work, they are classified into reciprocating pumps and centrifugal pumps. In this session we will be dealing with reciprocating pumps. Now what's a reciprocating pump? It works on a slider crank mechanism. It is also called as a positive displacement pump. It lifts water by the action of a reciprocating piston in a cylinder. So I'll show you a diagram of a reciprocating pump. I'll be briefly explain its working. Now these are the different parts of a reciprocating pump. You have the cylinder. There is a suction pipe, delivery pipe. There is a suction valve and delivery valve to control the flow of water. Inside the cylinder there will be the piston, piston rod, connecting rod and the crank rod. Now when the crank rotates in the anti-clockwise direction say from A to C, now what happens is piston moves from this position to this position that is from left to right. As a result a suction will be created inside the cylinder, the suction valve gets opened the suction valve and delivery valves are both one-way valves. They will allow the flow of water only in one direction. So when the pressure inside the cylinder gets reduced, a lift will be created. As a result, the water will flow from suction pipe to inside the cylinder and the valve gets closed. In the next cycle from C to A, the water inside the cylinder gets compressed. When the pressure reaches a sufficiently high value, the delivery valve will get opened. The water will flow to the tank. So A to C is called as the suction stroke and C to A is called as the delivery stroke. Now we will explain the work done by a reciprocating pump. We will start with the discharge. Now what is a discharge? So you need to understand this clearly before I explain what is a discharge or before I explain the work done by a pump. A discharge is the volume of water delivered in one revolution. So in one revolution a particular volume of water will go inside the cylinder and in the same in the second half of the revolution this same volume of water will go up to the tank so these are the different parts of a cylinder different terms you need to be different terms you need to understand first one is the diameter of the cylinder a is the cross sectional area of the piston small r is the radius of the crank n is the rpm of the crank l capital l is the length of stroke which will be twice the length of crank or twice the radius of the crank. Uh, H is the suction head and HD is the delivery head. Now volume of water delivered will be equal to A into L. A is the cross sectional area of the piston right and L is the stroke length that will be the length of the cylinder. So stroke length is the length or the distance piston moves from initial point to the end point that is the length of the cylinder. Number of revolutions per second will be, since n is rpm, per second will be n by 60. So discharge of the pump per second is, we will always transfer the volume of water inside the cylinder, that is A into L. So per second is into n by 60. So ALN by 60 is the discharge of the pump per second. Next is, weight of water delivered per second. So what is weight? Weight is actually mass into g, right? acceleration due to gravity. So here we need weight of water per second, that is m dot g. m dot g will be equal to what? v dot into density into g. So we already have what is v dot, right? that is aln by 60. You can see the red underline, rho g aln by 60 is the weight of water. Clear? Now next is the work done by the reciprocating pump per second. So work done. Work done's equation will be, what is work done? Force into distance, right? So force here is weight and distance here is total height through which water is lifted. So weight of the water lifted per second, we need work done per second. So we'll use weight of water per second. So weight of water per second is rho g ln by 60, we know that. And total height is hs plus hd. Now what is power? Power is rate of doing work, right? So work done per second is power. 
So we have to convert that into kilowatts. We'll simply divide the whole equation by thousands. So we'll get the work done in kilowatts. Sorry, power required to drive the pump in kilowatts. Next, I'll explain what is a double acting reciprocating pump. Now what's a double acting pump? So pumps are classified into reciprocating pumps are classified into single acting and double acting. It's very simple. The only thing is that uh, here water will be there on both sides of the piston. So during each stroke, there will be suction happening at one side and a delivery happening at another side. Clear? So that is the way in which a double acting reciprocating pump work. Now we'll derive the work done during a double acting reciprocating pump. So I hope you have a clear understanding of what a double acting reciprocating pump is. I'll, I'll just explain once more. There will be two delivery pipes and two suction pipes on both sides of the piston. And during each stroke, there will be suction happening at one side and delivery happening at one side. So during each revolution, there will be suction and there will be delivery. So we'll get a continuous flow of water. Now we can see volume of water discharge in one revolution. That is Q. That is pi d square by 4 plus pi by 4 d square minus d square into L. Uh, you might have a doubt about this part. I'll explain. See, that is... See, in one side of the piston, that, is, that means in this side, we have to uh, reduce the volume occupied by the piston rod. So that is this pi small d square by 4. D is the piston rod diameter. So D will be less than capital D. So we can neglect it. It's comparatively smaller when compared to the diameter of the cylinder. So we can neglect it. So discharge of the pump will be 2 AL by 60. So we will we, we'll basically get 2 times the discharge we have during a single acting pump. And the work done per second is rho g 2 ln by 60 by hs plus ht. Now next is slip. Now what is the slip of a reciprocating pump? Now slip is basically uh, before that. It's a different, uh, see, uh, it's a difference between theoretical discharge and actual discharge. So we all know that the theoretical discharge will be greater than actual discharge. This is because uh, of leaks or maybe some other problems. We won't get the uh, theoretical discharge. There will be lo losses. There will always be losses. So that difference is called as slip of a reciprocating pump. It is Q theoretical minus Q actual. And it is mostly expressed in the terms of percentage. So it's given by QTH minus Q actual by QTH into 100. And Q theoretical by, sorry, Q actual by Q theoretical is called as coefficient of discharge. Now what is negative slip? In some cases, what happens is the actual discharge will be greater than theoretical discharge. This mostly happens when the delivery pipe is very short, suction pipe is long and the pump is running at a very high speed and this is called as a negative slip. So I hope you have a proper idea about all these terms and all those things that I have explained in this video. If you have any doubts, please mail me. I will be always happy to explain. So thank you.